we're going to be very vague with this. There was a young lady out on the track, and um, she got sexually assaulted, and she got beat, and she got robbed. But when he threw her outside of the car naked, she got the license plate number. She remembered it. And she told her pimp the license plate number. But what the guy didn't know was that the pimp had a lady who had an aunt that worked for DMV. And later that night, because this was in broad daylight, later that night, the pimp arrived to the door of where the car was registered with, uh, let's say, a former FOI rogue and a rogue LAPD who was making money with people in the shadow world. <laughs> and uh, well, we can pretty much know how that story ended, but there were quite a few people in that house at the time. So I'm going to be real vague about that. But that's why I say oh, people about the collateral part of it, when they think that, oh, it's all glitz and glamour. It's, uh, it's like with, um, if you see pimps up holes down and Bishop says, uh, don't let these furs and these gators and all of this fool you. And his buddy said, let them know that the penitentiary come with all of that. The penitentiary come with all of that. It's not the pandering part. It's the collateral damage. I remember, and I'm, like I said, I'm being vague, a lady who got picked up from a strip club. And she was on her way to the track with her pimp. And uh, they stopped at a red light. She looked across the street, and she saw her uncle. And she got really scared, and she urinated on herself. And the pimp asked her, he said, what the hell is wrong with you? You peeing in my car? She said, that's him. That's the one that made me what I am today. All the molestation and the rape stories she used to tell him. Because I said, you live with these women for years at a time, months at a time. Somebody lives with them. They become, yeah, somebody lives with them. And you, they become human to you. And you become human to them. Even though what you're doing is what you're doing, they actually become members of your family. And um, she handed this particular guy a screwdriver. And he looked at her like she was crazy. And she said, you know, every night I risk being robbed, raped, and murdered for you. I risk going to prison for you every night. And I don't say anything. And she said, I want you to do this one thing for me. Just this one thing. And he did it. So, like I said, it's more to it than a lot of people think. They see the pink suits, they see the players ball, but it's other things. Now, even from an economic standpoint, if she's making you between stripping and the track 1500 a night easy, why would you risk losing an account? For that in this business, you know how to say the customer is always right. In this business, no, the employee is always right. Customers come and go, tricks come and go. The trick is not always right. She's right because she is where my money is or his money is, you know. So sometimes you have to do things. So when you end up going to prison, like, yeah, he was a pimp, he did 20 years in prison, they'd be like, what, he did 20 years for pimping? No, he didn't do 20 years for pimping. He did 20 years for attempted murder. He did 20 years for murder. He did 20 years for robbery. He did 20 years for moving this there. He did 20 years for cutting this person's fingers off in front of this other person so that he can understand did that. you know other pimps? Only me, Mac. Oh, remember, remember, I'm from L.A. What does that mean? Pimping is not our main source of income in the street. I knew more drug dealers it's than I knew pimps. It's become like to being a bum ass boyfriend pimp. I've come to find. All right, out. I don't consider that's not pimping. That's yeah. that's a hooker with a boyfriend. Yeah. That's a big difference. Or a scammer know? with a boyfriend. Was, yeah, that's you know that that that's not that's not pimping, man. You know, like I said, when I when I was dealing with gorgeous, we got into the psychological aspect of them, and I would use these women in the house as I wouldn't say case study, but you playing a lot of psychological games. You're doing a lot of body language. You're doing a lot of it's a mental game. It almost gets into mysticism. Mysticism. Expound. You di you're, in my book, uh, The Pimp Game, Secrets of Mind Manipulation, 
you're dealing with the innate. You know, you're manipulating love, hate, jealousy, anger, envy. That's what you're manipulating. And you're using these things to hook on, you, you, use it, you put your hooks into things that are innate to pull them towards you, to push them out there, to separate them from this one. You know, you're competing with their family members, you're competing with their conscience. You know, so you're constantly using your mouth, you're constantly using your brain, you're constantly moving chess pieces. And like I, I say in my books, I said, um, did that, did that, how does, I mean, it's, compare pimping to slavery. You really want me to? Yeah. It's very little comparison. Between what and what? When, okay. Except what well, my boy. I, I, I answered. Say between pimping and slavery. I answered a, a question like this, because it's, it's hard conscious-wise to answer it, but let's be honest. Uh, somebody asked me, where'd you get a lot of this from? I said, early on, and I said, the Willie Lynch letter. I said, that's not about physical slavery. It's about mental slavery. And he's using innate things. He's using jealousy. He's using reward and punishment. He's using fear of consequences. He's using things like that in your mind. How do five masters control 300 slaves? They got to want to be controlled, then how do you get them to do that? Because it's not natural. It's not natural. It's unnatural, but it is natural because it's innate, you know. Um, but it, well, it's it's you're you're playing on an instinct, but the situation is unnatural. So you have to create the situation. Yeah. So most of the time, you create the situation, or, or the perception of the situation. Perception of the situation, yeah, which is the same right, for which some people. Which is the same, because if your perceived reality is reality, then it is real. When that guy's running down the street naked on PCP, he truly believes he's oh, being yeah. chased by a hundred lions. He's running from a real fire. He's running from a real fire. Yeah. Just no one else sees it. That's right. So. Oh, no, that, when I was standing out here oh, with the door open waiting on you, it was a Mexican car street. Hey, motherfucker, I see you looking at me. You know, and then, but I kind of knew from his tone of voice, and I let him get close. He wasn't talking to me. No, they're not. He's looking past you. He was he wasn't looking in my direction. Because if you step to the side, he's still I'm looking straight. No. I'm just a bush. And you, you I'm a fire hydrant. When you're in that life, that world becomes the world. And you don't deal with anything outside that tell world. Me about the, tell me about you know the 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 women and what their outcomes were. Because I remember it pimps up holes down. Uh, who's the old guy from Frisco? Oh, Fillmore Slim? He said, he said, all my girls ended up dead or in a crazy house, or except for a few. And just in my, my mother was a wild character, and just women I know. Like, it, it's hard to imagine, some people do settle down, but some of them it's hard to imagine anything other than a bad end. The way I ran my game, doesn't even sound like you had a, necessarily had a game because it wasn't a game. It wasn't. I didn't lie to anybody, but the way I ran my program, most of these are still friends with me today, and uh, two ended up dead. What happened to them? One was drugs, and she was a lot older than me. That was one a friend of yours. She OD'd on her own? On her own. And the other one got beat to death by her boyfriend. Regular guy? Or? Yeah, you can probably Google her. Uh, he split her head open, and then he drowned her because he panicked. He was a regular guy. And she was uh, uh, in porn, and she was working, and she was stripping, and they got into an argument over what she was doing, and he hit her one time too many. But like actually doing it? No, no. Now the crazy house, several, several. But a lot of these women were crazy before they got there, and unfortunately, I put an exclamation point on it because I justified their insanity to make it seem sane. So if if a woman like it's one thing to be, but both of them got married and stuff. They moved on. around drugs, but like. For a youngish, even even like just moderately slightly attractive woman, if they have any normalcy, it's pretty easy. It's easy for a girl to have a couple dudes give me some pussy once a month and get the car note and the rent paid. What is the missing thing that makes a girl be like, oh, I want to live in this situation and walk up and down Figaro and get it in and out of cars. They never had a family. They had a fucked up family. That's the Hollywood narrative. Okay, so what's the real? It's exciting and fun, and they don't want to admit that. They do it because they like doing it. I did it because I like doing it. Do I, people ask me, do you miss yeah, you, it? You, obviously, we talk, you didn't grow up in poverty. I mean, no. That, well, you know, that's not the narrative of, like, especially black criminals 
is, you know, came from Mississippi, and, you know. And that's real, too. And well, a lot of them be everybody. lying. No, it's all <laughs> No, I remember watching Frank Lucas on American Gangster, and his justification for it all was, I saw my cousin get lynched. I mean, that's very dramatic, and things like that happen. Maybe you did, but what they got to do with selling heroin in New York in 1975? Nothing. I did it because I wanted to. Yeah. I did it because it made me feel powerful. I did it because it was fun, and I didn't care what I was risking. The risk wasn't even acknowledged. I did things in broad daylight. Everything I did was, because th that world seemed so normal. I didn't function outside of that world. It, it goes from the street walking prostitute or the boyfriend pimp all the way up to, let's say, the Larry Flints and the uh, Epstein's and, and everything in between. That's all I knew. As an aside, because I'm here, I'm interested in the sociology of stuff. Mm -hmm. So California is very different demographically, socially, economically, culturally from the rest of the country. Yeah. So from Detroit, you know, black people have political, some political, fair amount of political and economic power. There's lots, I mean, it's the bad parts are worse than here, but like, it just how much, you know, you've traveled, you know, what's different about LA than anywhere, especially. In general, but also specifically. You mean pimping wise? People. No. LA. Just the culture. LA is a microcosm of the entire world. You got everybody in LA from uh, Scandinavians to pygmies. And like I tell them, you can pimp in Detroit, you can pimp in Chicago because you're somebody and a star. When you're in LA, you're competing against Kevin Costner. You're competing against Meryl Streep. We have real stars. We have Hollywood right down the block. So you have to have a lot of psychological power to make a girl get out of a Trix Rolls Royce with his money to get into a man's right. Cadillac that's eight years old. Why would she give, wouldn't she stay this way if, if it was economic? If, well, if she was, if what she was looking for was money, but that's not what they're looking for. No, it's never what they're looking for. That's why they can give you all the money. Because the trick is pull, if, if it would have been a different woman at her on the corner or at the hotel or at the phone number, it would have been her, so she's not actually special. Mm -mm. She doesn't want the guy in the Rolls Royce. Because she doesn't want the money. She and wants the life and the lifestyle. And to make something, to feel like she's important. The guy with the role, she's just a, a product off the shelf. With me, she, I, she has my undivided attention. And she's helping, at least in her head, make you. Maybe it's true, yeah. maybe it's not, but. Either, see, you can tell, it's two different types of uh, women in the life. And you can tell by the way they talk to you. Either they call you daddy, or they call you baby. Now, the older ones used to call me baby, and I got into that role where you're teaching me. And then the other ones would call me daddy. So I got into that role where I'm teaching them. like a mother. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I had an auntie-nephew relationship. Did you have She's sex 20 years her? older than I am. Huh? Did you have sex with her sometimes? Occasionally. But not much. But it, it wasn't. It was kind of like you had to or something? It was like we did it to clear the air. Because that's the only time... Her emotions were involved. She couldn't have emotional sex with anyone else. Ah. So the sex was different. So you, she was, you were fulfilling a need for her. Yeah, that's what you're doing with all of them. You're, you're closing that big hole inside of them. And it's never economic. It's never economic. See, I can give you what your parents didn't give you, and that's my undivided attention. Mm. No matter how much money you came from, they didn't love you like I do. They didn't talk to you for six hours. They didn't split nobody's head open like I did. You can call the police and the guy go to jail. You can call your father and he'll tell you not to do it no more. You call me and I'm going to put his brains in the street. And I'm going to do it just for you. What do I have to do that? What do I have to do for that? Oh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I'm sorry. But when I laugh, it's not related to comedy. I have that joker thing. It's just oh, no, any kind was, of. <laughs> you're going to do well. You can definitely make a living on camera. <laughs> You mean everything to me, and I'm not lying about it. You do mean everything. No, you do, because they're, 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 they're your income. They, they really do, and they know it's true. Yeah. If they all disappeared on the same day, where's daddy's rent going to come from? And especially when you get that middle child. Oh, they would. Oh, the middle child, don't you love that ice? Well, I can't say that, okay, but they think I'm talking about real ice. No, ice tobacco. <laughs> it's just tobacco. You can buy it at any 7-Eleven or whatever, but no. My, the ones that really were easy, not so much easy to manipulate and control, but I would say the loyalists were the middle children. The Jan Brady's, I call them. But because you're not the baby, you're not the oldest, and you're usually not the most attractive. But in my presence, you're the most attractive. In my presence, 
you're uh, the center of attention. Now, why would she want to go home after that, no matter how big the home is? What was the difference between a black and a white, or black and non-black, or whatever? I, did, I had a lot of foreign. I had, because okay, I was what was in, the difference between the white, black, and the foreign? Foreign, it was really no game involved. Foreign, they were usually were prostitutes at 12. They were, and this was, no, this was a profession. This was they just a been broken in by a long time real ago. Daddy. Yeah, I, I had um, a lot of Eastern European women, one in particular that was in her 50s. She looked like she was about 30. And this was a profession, no more than a doctor or a policeman. You know, I'm a prostitute. I work for you now. And that's that. I need you to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. I mean, it was... That was, that was the, more of a bit a total business related. Total. No psychological nothing. No. Didn't need to do nothing. No. Mickey, what's next assignment? Such, 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 such. Okay. I mean, yeah, sure. What about the white women? More troubled? I noticed in jail... I mean, anyone can fall victim to drugs, so there's a lot of people in jail that just are normal and got into drugs. But of, like, the criminal criminals, the white guys are more, tr there's less of them, but they're more troubled. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't deal with a lot of those, because still, coming from my family background, I can, like when people say, I, I tell them, my thug years was maybe 18 months. I'm a criminal aristocrat. I said, I've broken laws, hearts, and jaws, but I've never broken a verb. I said, no, I come from... My grandmother has a college degree. She has a master's degree. My parents have a master's degree. My baby, my baby mama's a doctor. I said, so this was a choice, but I was in high school six years. <laughs> and I had already been shot, stabbed in more fights than you got fingers and toes, you know? The yard, I've been stabbed through the face. You know, they're trying to assassinate me, though. But you know, you should go see the other guys. But yeah, I'm still here, but I'm numb from here down. Give it us, actually pains me to talk. Give us a highlight reel of the porn stuff oh when I met the other woman in my 20s uh, she introduced me to Ron Hightower and uh, she had already had a website and I said you know Ron Hightower the Ron Hightower I said so you know how to take this he knows how to take this little stuff that you do and get it to the shelf so I started you know covering my music business long time ago you know with Microsoft I was hearing distribution I was hearing wholesaler I was hearing retailer I was hearing all of this is legal all of that was going through my head I said introduce me to him and he came by the house one night. He saw some of the amateur stuff I had recorded. He said, this is some good stuff. He said, but hang with me for a little while. You know, your camera's a little shaky. Your, your equipment's a little obsolete. I can bring you up to that level, and I can introduce you to a couple of clients that will buy some of this stuff for you at this price. And the rest was history. You know, I just started getting this offer and that offer. And then a lot of the girls that used to work for me in the houses, I made them all porn stars. And like I told, um, I told somebody I was talking to, I said, how much would you have pay to have sex with a Puerto Rican girl? He said, 300. I said, how much would you pay to have sex with Cardi B? And he said, 20, 30, 40,000. I said, okay, see, I'm the guy that's gonna make that Puerto Rican girl Cardi B. And I said, I didn't have a music company, but I had a porn company, so I can put her on a box cover and let hundreds of thousands of people know who she is. So, you know, she's not just um, Jan, you know, Jan, Jane Doe anymore. Now she's, uh, Candy Apple or this starlet. And people are flying in from all over the world, not country, world, because in other countries, they didn't separate their videos from adult films and what they call regular movies. If you go to Bangladesh, if you go to the Middle East, if you go to Europe, you're right next to Meryl Streep. So all they know is she's been in 13 movies, she's been in 60 movies. So their, their videos are not separated. So they actually see you as a star. So they'll fly in and spend 10, 20 just to be with that particular girl who was just walking the track a week, uh, a couple, couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And I said, instead of turning dates all night, why don't you turn one date, let me record it, and I put it on the box cover and we move 20,000 units at $5 a piece. Why don't we do that? And that money comes back in 60 to 90 days. But I said, guess what? It's only four to five scenes her movie and each scene is uh, an hour's worth of time so we can shoot a movie every day. I said, why don't we do that? So the, yeah, things went to another level because of that, you know? So I, like I said, once I hit my 20s, I got off the street, I never went back to the street. It was in call with porn stars, out call with porn stars and the prices went up with a zero behind them. We don't want you to fast forward us to I want to end, I, I, I don't, well, we could go infinitely. So I want to just, this is so strong. I want to, mm -hmm. let's go to your last, to the case 
Which oh that one? And and being a person can be those two. Those okay. Two. Can we start now? Yeah. Well, my last case, I had um. I had squared up before that. I just stopped. You know, the woman I was with, we we just stopped. She's I, she's I was filming her, and I said, you know what, I'm tired. You know, I've been a career criminal from age 13 to now. And I said, I've taken a few little breaks, but I ran back to it because when you're good at something, you don't want to leave. And I said, I'm tired. You know, I was doing the back and forth Mexico thing. I was doing, all of this was going on at the same time. And I said, I'm just I'm tired. And I did, what I didn't want to be was these 60, 70 year old guys with the flamboyant suits Shut on. Yeah, I'm not saying that. With, a, <laughs> with, the, with the arrested development, still using lingo from the South. I said, you're somebody's grandfather. You look ridiculous. You, 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 you move you're up. You're supposed to have won or stopped. Yeah, I mean, matured and progressed. You're supposed to have, like, you ain't made no money yet. You're still trying to make some money? I don't mind you being a drug dealer in your 70s. I have a problem with you selling rocks in your 70s. How? I mean, if you worked at Walgreens, you would have moved up to manager by now. <laughs> you, you're still on the floor. You know, clean up aisle five. Really? So, no, I didn't, I didn't want to be that. So I told myself, at 40, I'm going to stop all And I just I stopped all of it. I had money left over quite a bit, and I was living below my means. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna write. This is what I wanna do. This is what I wanted to do since age five, and I got distracted. So I said, I'm gonna write, because the original Pimp Game instructional guide came out in 98. Along for the ride, I wrote in 99. I didn't publish another book until 2018, getting out of prison.